in general, I'm not a big fan of President Trump. But the one area where I'm rooting for him is with North Korea. I want him to win that Nobel Peace Prize. Mostly just to see him bite into it because he thinks it's chocolates. <laughs> so for me, this was good news. Good morning. Back on. President Trump announcing that historic summit between the U.S. and North Korea, once canceled, will now take place as originally planned. This summit that was on and then off is now back on again. The president announced this afternoon he will be in Singapore on June 12th for an historic meeting with North Korea's Kim Jong-un. The president called it a getting-to-know-you meeting plus. What? <laughs> a getting-to-know-you meeting plus? Plus what? Plus onion rings? <laughs> or plus a plan to shut down North Korea's nuclear program? Like, what is the plus? Because that's what this meeting was supposed to be about. Do you remember that? Maybe he means plus an NDA, because that's usually how he gets to know someone. Maybe it's that. I don't know how this works. But still, so uh, the summit is officially back on. All right, but don't get too excited yet, because if anything, I think we should treat this like the Roseanne reboot. Sure, <laughs> it's on now but it's only one 3 a.m. tweet away from getting canceled again, so don't get too excited. <laughs> but for now, we can enjoy how North Korea got back on the president's good side. Kim Jong-chul, a former spy and now North Korea's top nuclear negotiator, became the first North Korean official to visit the White House in nearly 20 years. Kim Jong-un's point man delivered a letter from the North Korean leader. A picture of President Trump with the vice chairman of North Korea there. Big smiles on their faces. President Trump holding the oversized envelope with the letter from Kim Jong-un. Look at how excited he is about his giant envelope. Like, like, it looks like he's the one visiting the leader in the Oval Office. Why is he so happy? And it, you can see, it doesn't even matter what's in the envelope. Trump is just like a kid who gets an expensive race car for Christmas, and then when you look over, he's just playing with the cardboard box. Whee! And we, we actually got the envelope right here, the actual envelope. Here it is, if you wanna... <laughs> this is it. I, uh... It's weird. It, it looks so big when he was holding... It must be like an optical illusion. Anyway, uh, so... What did that letter say that convinced Trump to resume denuclearization talks with North Korea? Well, that's what reporters outside the White House wanted to know. This was a very really good meeting. Don't forget, this was a meeting uh, where a letter was given to me by Kim Jong-un, and that letter was a uh, very nice letter. Oh, would you like to see what was in that letter? Yeah, would you like... Us, how much? How much? <laughs> how much? Uh, it was a very interesting letter. But the president subsequently revealed he hadn't opened it. Uh, no, I didn't. I haven't seen the letter yet. I purposely didn't open the letter. I haven't opened it. I may be in for a big surprise, folks. <laughs> Come on, dude. You know, there are times when I understand why Trump lies, because it's about something important, like this is the biggest tax cut in history, or no collusion, or my wife hasn't left me. I get that. <laughs> but going from the letter is interesting and great to I haven't read it in under 10 minutes, that's just wasting a lie. It's like getting to ask God one question and then just going, what's up? <laughs> But look, fine, either way, the summit is back on. It's just a week away, and everything seems to be back on track, except, except for one Kim-sized thing. There have been some published reports that North Korea wants the U.S. to pay for a fancy hotel room for Kim Jong-un in Singapore. A swanky five-star hotel in Singapore where the presidential suite runs about $6,000 a night. A spokesperson for the State Department did respond to the Washington Post saying that the United States doesn't plan to pay this hotel bill and they won't be asking another country to pick up the tab either. Yeah, you know, it makes sense. If one thing is gonna break the deal, it's Trump having to pay for someone else to stay in a presidential suite. That makes sense. Yeah, because Trump's probably gonna be like, no, I'm the president. And Kim's gonna say, well, I don't see supreme leader suites anywhere. <laughs> and then because none of them can ever back down, they're just gonna end up sharing a room. And Trump is gonna be like, okay, fine, but we have to sleep butt to butt. <laughs> also, if you need to pee in the middle of the night, I don't mind. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Well, that took you a while. That took you a while. Oh. There is another solution. Trump could book his own presidential suite and then everyone else could just book Kim Jong-un his presidential suite. And I know you're asking the big question, who's gonna pay for it? Mexico. Yeah.